Yo, what's up? I'm Jordan, and today I'm gonna be showing you how I made that little animation. It looks complex, but it's really easy, just some simple masking and keyframes in Photoshop and After Effects. So without further ado, let's get into it. You live in my dream step. Right, now that you're in Photoshop, you want to create a square canvas about 2000 by 2000, so it's a nice big resolution and high quality, and then you can just go and drag in your photo. And really any photo will work, but I like this 45 degree side profile. Rename the background and then duplicate it by pressing Ctrl J and rename the top one red. Then make sure you have the bottom one selected. Go to image adjustments and saturation, human saturation, and bring the saturation down so it's black and white. Then select the top one, go to select color range and press on the red from the hoodie. And that'll select all the red in the photo that matches up with that. And then press the mask on the bottom right. And then you can go ahead and clean up that mask. I was just doing this fast for the sake of the video, but if you really wanted to make this nice and clean, go ahead and clean up this mask with the brush. Make sure you have the white brush selected and then clean up the parts of your color that you want to remain in the photo here on the sleeve. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and select these two layers on the right, convert it to a smart object. So it's all one layer. And then we're gonna go and mask around his face to kind of create this mask almost um, type look. When you get to the jawline, hold Alt and drag this point in. That'll allow you to create a nice right angle and the same up here at the top. Then we're gonna go up and make sure you duplicate this background layer. And name it face cutout. Then go to the top left, selection, make selection and about two feather radius is good. And then go to the bottom right and create a layer mask. So now you just have that like a mask, literally a mask of his face. Duplicate it and make the bottom one name it whole because that's what it'll be. And then create a new adjustment layer called levels and hold alt and press right underneath that layer to create a clipping mask so that that adjustment layer only affects the layer below it and then what you're gonna do is just grab that white part drag it all the way over to the left which will make it pitch black which will kind of create the illusion of a hole where his face used to be then grab the top layer his face and drag it down and to the right a little bit so now you have this kind of weird face effect with his face separated now you want to drag in all these flowers i'll leave a link in the description to download them all but you can really use any flower png or vine png and then i'm just gonna go one flower at a time arranging it around the outside there's not too much of a science around this this kind of personal preference just make sure that it's below the face cutout and kind of sprinkled around evenly distributed around his face and here i have a blank flower stem that i'm gonna put below this flower level just because this uh, flower png doesn't have a stem and so this will allow it allow me to drag it a bit farther out from his face and still look natural with your stem. And then here, if you want to use up more space and duplicate a flower layer, you can. And all you have to do is create a new hue and saturation adjustment layer. Then make sure you create a clipping mask so it only affects that one flower layer that you want. And then you can go and just drag the hue to adjust it. Here, I made it a little bit bluer. That way it just looks like a different flower to the naked eye when you first look at it. Even though it's the same layer as this viscous above, it just looks the same. If you want to add a bit of depth, I put this flower above the face cutout layer just so it'll look like it's coming from behind the mask and then popping out over his face. So on this layer, you want to create a mask again by pressing the bottom right. I'm sorry that it's cut out. My screen recording's a bit weird there. But once you have that mask, hold control and press on the mask of the face cutout layer. That will select all the pixels in that mask. Then you can use the black brush on the mask to draw over the parts you don't want, which for me was the stem. And then I'm going to do the same on this lily. Just make sure you select those pixels and I'm going to draw around that flower petal to hide it so it looks like it's coming out from behind and over the mask. All right, now I just want to add a vine to kind of uh, go around his jaw, to wrap around his jaw to make his jawline a little bit stronger. Use this uh, the same mask technique I just talked about to hide the parts you don't want. And then I'm just going to clean out some of these leaves and some of the stem I don't want. And then you see, I just pressed on the little link uh, between the mask and the layer, which allows me to move the layer without the mask moving because I wanted to bring it a bit more to the right. And then I just go ahead and clean up the parts that I missed. Now what we want to do is create a bit more definition between each of the layers. So I'm going to do this by adding a drop shadow. You can pause this to copy the settings. All right, and then we're going to go to bevel and emboss and turn that on again. And you can copy all of these settings just pause the video 
All right, so now what you want to do is copy all of these settings to all of the other flower layers. So just hold Alt and drag from where it says effects and drag it to each of the other flower layers. Now you want to add a drop shadow to the face as well. So this one's going to be a bit different. We're going to bump the distance up a little bit. And also we want it on a bit of an angle to match kind of where the light's coming from. Uh, bring the distance back a bit to about seven, the spread to about three, and the size will end up being about 10 pixels. So a bit smaller than it was on the flowers. All right, so now uh, we're pretty much done. I just want to adjust the positioning a bit. So I would bring these flowers out to create a bit more space and a bit more separation between all of the flowers. So in Photoshop, there's still a few more things we want to do. For one, the flower stems, like in the top left where I combined the flower and the flower stem. You want to convert that to a smart object. Make sure you have the any adjustment layers selected as well so it goes into the smart object. So now when I move around that layer it'll bring the rose and the stem together and then do the same for this lily convert to smart object. So now you just want to save that as a Photoshop file and go over to After Effects. All right, now that we're in After Effects, go and press New Composition from Footage and select the Photoshop file that you just saved. Make sure it's set as Import as Composition and Editable Layer Styles, and then just double click on that composition. So now you have each of the Photoshop layers from before as an individual After Effects layer. Then what we're gonna do is start off with the face cutout, drag forward to about 12 frames and set a position keyframe. You can shortcut this by pressing P and then go back to the start and line up the face to about where it should be. Then go ahead and select both the keyframes, go to keyframe assistant and easy ease. This will just make the keyframes look a little bit more natural. And in After Effects, you always wanna do this as much as possible with any keyframe. Then we wanna make the shadow animate as well. So go down to effects and drop shadow, create a keyframe at 100% at about the same point as your position, and then drag to the start and keyframe opacity for the drop shadow down to zero at the start of the frame. Then I just want to adjust the ease a little bit of that position keyframe. So go ahead, select both keyframes and press the little graph icon. So now you'll have this graph. It looks complicated, but really it's not. Just grab that little yellow point and drag them both together and then select them both. And I actually want to make this animation a bit longer. So go ahead and bring it out to about one second mark. Now I'm going to adjust this again. So, so I'm going to drag that front nub forward a bit. And this is what it looks like so far. All right, so now we want to animate out all of these flowers. So go and select one of the bottom flower layers and pull it out to about the end of that last animation. And then go about 10 frames forward from that layer, keyframe the position, and then go back to the start of that layer and pull the flower below the face. And then again, we're just gonna repeat this same process for all of the bottom flower layers. Just keyframe it and drag it below the face. So it's pretty easy. It looks like it's coming out from the face. Uh, for this orchid, as well as the position, I wanted to keyframe the rotation. So again, I go about 10 frames forward, keyframe position, and then I also press R to pull up rotation keyframes and keyframe that. And then I'm gonna go back to the start of that layer and adjust the rotation a bit so that it matches kind of the rotation of the flower stem and then drag it below. So now when it comes out, there's just a bit more natural movement. All right, next is animating these top layers. Now, honestly, you could do some complicated stuff with masks to animate the position out, but I didn't want to do that. I was lazy and you honestly can't really tell. So all I did was grab this top layer, go for it about 10 frames again, and then keyframe the opacity of the layer at 100, go back to the start and then bring it down to zero. Now you might think this is lazy and it'll look bad, but if you'll look in a second when it all goes together, you can't really tell unless you really look close and even then it looks pretty good still. We're pretty much done. All you want to do now is select all of the bottom flower layers, just hold shift and select them all, then press U to bring up all of their keyframes and select them all, right click, go to keyframe assistant and do easy ease. Scan like I said before, you wanna do with everything to smooth out those keyframes. And then I just wanna stagger these flowers coming out a bit more, so I drag them out. Progress update, it looks pretty good. Go back to the original composition, go to where the animation ends and then press Control shift d to cut it down the middle, delete the top layer and then select the layer that's remaining, press Control d to duplicate it, then right click, go to time, time reverse, so then it's backwards and then again time stretch and I want to speed it up a bit so I did about negative 75, a negative so that it's in reverse and the 75 so that it's stretched less aka uh, sped up. Press Control k You can see here that the composition is three seconds 
seconds and 12 frames. So I'm going to go and make the composition that long. And then now you'll see it's this perfectly looping flower animation. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments. Uh, and if you watched this far, I'm assuming you liked the video. So please give a like and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials and stuff like this. I feel like outros are usually longer, but like, I don't know what to say. Um, follow me on Instagram, <laughs> Jordan7Mitchell. Uh, I don't know. That's about it. Peace out. <laughs> I feel like that was very awkward.